I suppose this is what they use to keep the place so clean. They're not gonna... I'm not sure if the acid is strong enough. I'll need to add something else. I'm not sure if the acid is strong enough. I'll need to add something else. It's a bottle of sulfuric acid. By adding this sulfuric acid, I've created a highly corrosive substance. This door goes into the dining room. This door goes into the dining room. means. Hmm, I wonder what it means. shows this stone altar must be used for some kind of mystic rite this small sphere is fixed onto a strange base. I can't move it. A polystyrene box in the middle of all this stuff. It's been used to transport a spherical object. There's an old leather bound book on the altar. Damn, it's written in Latin. I'm never going to understand it. It's an old parchment. Written centuries ago, judging by the language. It's the parchment I found in the secret room. 1902 AD. Notes on induced perpetual sequential refraction. My studies on sequential refraction, which started 100 years ago, are about to reach a turning point. Thanks to the new scientific advances, I have managed to insert more than 9,000 reflecting crystals into the induction sphere 
thus tripling its capacity. This opens new horizons for my discovery. The use of the induction sphere is no longer limited to the simple accumulation of ley line energy. Such a high degree of sequential refraction can, at least in theory, capture and infinitely reproduce a long series of images. By matching this new characteristic to the already known properties of the sphere, I believe I am able to construct a machine capable of bringing new benefits to humanity. There's a book inside. It's a diary. Life has taught me that if you're looking for the truth, you won't find it in books, but carved into the flesh of the man beside you. Yet the strength of contradiction has managed to undermine the ground I walk on, and has challenged every certainty I once had. Today, I'm duty-bound to say that I will be reborn into a new life, and all thanks to an absolute truth that I found in a book. The Dust-Covered Diary of a Watchmaker The machine that we're looking for looks like a clock with a moving pendulum and is inlaid with arabesque patterns. It's dated between the 17th and the first half of the 18th century. In the years between 1670 and 1700, the pendulum was taken to a large underground room called the Pendulum Chamber by its designer. This room, which stands in the middle of a complex labyrinth, is directly accessible by a duct that flows to the surface. Even though it's never been located, the entrance to the pendulum chamber is presumed to be near a sculpture or bas-relief representing the victory of an angel in the struggle against a lion. I won't waste too many words on the economic side of the affair. Suffice it to say that finding the device will require consistent capital investment. So Jacob, let's see if I got this straight. You've been doing my head in for an hour. And with the crap written in that old heap of paper. And now, you want me to hand over a million? In cash? To finance your bullshit? Is that right? It's just a loan, Tony. If there's something you didn't get, I can go over it again. No, no, no. It's clear as crystal. You're not after any damn archeological bullshit. No, who do you take me for? I could smell bullshit a mile off. If you want to play with my money, friend, then I want to be on the game too. Okay, Jack. Let's get out of here before I blow this jerk's brains out. Tony, I need that money. Look on it like a favor. Do it for old time's sake. No problem. I want to be one of the team. No, oh, look, you're not listening to me, Greaseball. I just want your damn money. A freaking loan, now and without your bullshit. Well, we partners then, Paisan. Excellent choice, Craig. Smile. You just won a million dollars. Seeing that we're on the same side now, you can start telling me the truth. The power of the pendulum has given free rise to a race of obscure individuals, once men, now immortals. For centuries, these spiders have woven their webs of deceit and corruption around us. We, their small, powerless prey, have lived in blindness. The immortals are a cancer. They contaminate and control every human organ. The great religious faiths, the state police, the CIA, the KGB, even the most banal local political movements. The cancer must be eliminated. I'll be the one to do this, thanks to a simple intervention on the machine that generated that same cancer. The reward for having saved the world from tyranny will be eternal life for me and my small group of followers. We will lead men into true freedom. Nations will see their false governments fall. Their idols will die. A new kingdom will come. The kingdom of the apocalypse. Only three questions remain unanswered. Where is the old watchmaker? 
Why did he leave me to discover his truth? Could the father of the immortals be dead? This man could be our only obstacle, the only one who can reach us in the place we're going. Let's get out of here, Dukes. Someone's coming. It's gone. Madre de Dios! It's written in Latin. I got top marks in Latin at school. It shouldn't be a problem. As year follows year, I convince that our land is governed by men both noble and just, yet enmity between sovereigns bring great suffering to the people. From that which I have seen and that which I have read in my books, only the blue blood of the knighthood and the great wisdom of the nobles has strength enough to burn and destroy the troubles of this world. My plan my great design shall be to create a new immortal kingdom, a world without end, founded by men of nobility and great intellect. They shall govern with peace, justice, and chivalry over all peoples, and their kingdom shall have no end. With my knowledge and my time control apparatus, I shall guarantee the immortality of their bodies and souls, and the strength to hold the fiercest armies ever created in the palm of their hands. No more shall there be war, pestilence, or persecution of the weak and oppressed. No more shall there be lords and masters, peasants and slaves, or any other injustice which leads man to revolt. There shall be years of good government. With this accomplished, I shall withdraw into peace and silence, as I have so often dreamed. My eternal life-giving apparatus in its most complete form appears in the guise of a pendulum clock. The energies which course through the veins of our ancient land and the paths taken by wandering spirits ensure its working into eternity. The form of the pendulum was no mere choice. On the contrary, it is a clock of the soul, an instrument capable of reaching a true equilibrium of the depths of the human spirit, capable of controlling the internal clock hidden in every man. This internal clock represents the part of us which silently governs the rhythms of our lives. Here is how my pendulum can offer eternal life. The internal clock is stopped, leaving the spirit in harmony with the running of time. My studies have two separate phases. In the first phase, 24 noble men, including myself, shall be chosen and gathered together to receive the gift of immortality. 24 noble hearts, like the 24 hours of my pendulum. In the second phase, I myself shall bring the pendulum to a halt, causing the internal clock to stop inside the chosen men. They shall become immortal. The pendulum shall be transported to a safe place, and it shall be buried forever. For if the strength of the eternal life is to remain, the pendulum must never swing again. The man who gives his soul to the pendulum, and so to eternal life, will acquire virtues which raise him above other mortal creatures. These virtues are linked to the internal clock and particularly allow control over physical aging or the gift of eternal youth or maturity according to the immortal's desire. Invincibility of the flesh or the gift of invulnerability. Not fire, nor blade, nor sword, nor any mortal weapon can touch an immortal. Physical excellence or the gift of constant perfect health, never victim of disease or plague or hunger or of other pestilence which affect our people. 
the watchmaker, myself, the elder, my one and only friend and the first chosen noble in our immortal kingdom, the translator, known as the greatest virtuoso of the art of fortune telling, the surgeon. During my visit to France, he was introduced to me as the most respected surgeon in the land. The philosopher. This man is greatly admired for his merits in literature and philosophy. The trader. An astute trader and an able salesman whom I met during my council with His Majesty Charles II. The poet. In the Italian lands, as he knew how to use both the sword and the lira. The conqueror. The most able general and man of arms you're likely to meet. Never has his blood tarnished a battlefield. The Mediator, advisor to His Majesty Louis XIV. I met him whilst crossing the Kingdom of France. The Collector, in the archives of the Kingdom, his hand in peace. The Weaver, his great talent lies in his ability to manipulate people as though they were mere tatters of cloth. The Toreador, of knightly values and noble heart, he is always ready to defend the weak and oppressed. The Traveler, more widely traveled than any other man, he has seen the sun rise over continents far and wide. The Maestro, as soon as I heard him speak, I understood. Today they call him mad, tomorrow they will recognize him as the light of the world. The Judge, without justice, that the kingdom will never him, and always, and strength. The Artist, patron of great painters, sculptures, and art and civilization in this world. The banker. If wealth is needed in our new kingdom, he is surely the person who knows how to make it prosper and grow. The preacher. This cardinal is the bravest and most revolutionary thinker to ever cross the threshold of the Holy Sepulchre. The admiral. Master of the English art of naval warfare. The astronomer. Stargazer who refuses philosophy and deduction. His observations are made with new lenses and instruments. The foreigner, born in a land where silk with the wisdom of his people. The hunter, first knight of the crown and master of the sword in the French court. The prophet, there where the shadows, darkness can be conquered by the profession of his faith. The monk, the wise, knowledgeable guardian of the library of 